pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In the midst of a pandemic going on, one of the uh, buzzwords in our culture right now, among many others, is the word interactive. Um, the challenge is to find ways to be interactive when we're told to socially distance and to avoid gatherings. Uh, but of course, um, interactivity has been a very big deal all along. Um, you may or may not know uh, that there is even an interactive refrigerator. Um, it has a satellite uplink to provide real-time weather forecasts, a 15-inch LCD screen for digital photos, digital memos, displaying up to 50 preloaded recipes. You can get a connection to a DVD player or USB mm -hmm. drive or FM radio. The refrigerator even keeps your food cold, believe it or not. <laughs> that would be nice. Of all of those <laughs> other things. Um, tonight's class is about interactivity. Um, every week on one, on one level, it's about interactivity. But tonight, as we engage the text, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, is about uh, differing layers of interactivity. Uh, interactivity between us and God, and then interactivity between us and our world. And uh, both have huge implications. And um, it's, I think I've mentioned a couple of times since we've been in Colossians, it was written 2,000 years ago, and it, it's as relevant as tomorrow's newscast. And I think we will uh, we'll see that as we engage the text tonight. I can have somebody read for us from the text first, and then we'll start discussing. Uh, somebody read for us for, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verses 2 through 6, please. I'll do that. Thanks, Jack. Continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving, with all praying also for us that God would open unto us a door of utterance, that is, for the word, to speak the mystery of Christ, for which I am also in bonds, that I may make it manifest as I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. Amen. Thank you, sir. All right, let's start at the... Be diligent. Be diligent Dil in prayer. All right, diligence. Okay, good. Pray with Pray without, without ceasing. ceasing. All right, I've got Mary and Jack in stereo. Pray without ceasing at the same time. Yeah. Uh, the words of Thessalonians chapter 5. Tom Green, go ahead. Persistent. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. When you devote yourself to something, you, you dedicate your efforts, you research it, you practice it, you give it effort until you've got it right. I love how you how you emphasize several things there: the dedication uh, to work on it, to research it, uh, to keep at it, and this is something that when you feel like you get it right, you keep on keeping after it. So, uh, so very very well said. Um, this I obvious. Also, uh, Go ahead, I'm sorry. I would say to hold dear. So, if we're devoted to someone, we hold that person in esteem and we hold them dear. So um, that acknowledgement. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, so we, we certainly don't wanna quit. We want to be ready to break into prayer at any time. Um, that actually happened yesterday as I was teaching this class because this material uh, because we got word uh, about uh, Britain's house fire about halfway through the class yesterday. So you just stop and you pray. Mm -hmm. And that's part of being devoted to prayer. When an issue comes up, you're ready to break into prayer uh, at uh, any moment um, to be fully in, as Chip mentioned just a few moments ago. Now with that comes a question. Um, if, we, if it's so important to be devoted uh, uh, to prayer, 
Um, does this mean that God is somehow reluctant to answer our prayers and we have to continually keep pestering him till, till he finally caves and gives us what we want? <laughs> All right. Um, ob obviously, obviously not. Um, but, but it does mean that uh, we always have an open heart and an open dialogue uh, between us and God. A, a, a dialogue is different than a monologue, by the way. Um, a, a dialogue is I, as I am praying and I'm also quiet and I'm listening for him. Um, so it's more than just me, me giving. It, it's, it's received. And, and I love the way John Piper puts this. David, I'm going to come right to you. Um, he says, prayer is not designed as an intercom between us and God. It's designed as a walkie-talkie for spiritual battlefields. It's the link of, between active soldiers and their command center. Um, uh, I like the way. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. What were you going to say, David? I think it's less about... Um, whether God's listening, whether he responds, whether we get what we want, blah, blah, blah. And more about, are we in the right frame of mind? Um, if you only pray occasionally, you're probably never going to really be in the right frame of mind. I think so, too. I think so, too. And, and Tom Green, go ahead. It's an expression of our faith that God will answer our prayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, with that, and uh, since since I'm a preacher, you know I got a story, so uh, um, I'll share this with you. Um, preach, preacher once went to visit a man who was very, very sick. Uh, the man had, had uh, pretty much left church, had not been faithful to God for a long, long time. Small town, everybody in town knew the man needed to change his ways. Uh, when the man who was very sick saw the preacher, he started making all kinds of promises. He said, I'll change my whole life. I'll get back into church. I'll start, I'll start giving. I'll quit cheating on my wife. I'll do anything so that you'll pray for me that God will heal me. So the preacher knelt by his bed and he prayed. He said, Lord, you've heard my brother's promises of what he'll do if you heal him. If he means it, cure him. If he doesn't mean him, kill him. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> <laughs> preacher got up and left the room without saying another word um being devoted to prayer is a lot different than um 911 um only only use in case of emergency um devoting is an ongoing uh, type of thing um now, he adds a layer to it in verse uh, 2 when he says, as you devote yourselves to prayer, to be watchful in prayer. So what does it mean to be watchful in prayer? Yeah, Dave? Uh, I think on the front end of it, it means to be um looking out for opportunities to build and and extend your relationship with God through through prayer um, and on the back end of it it's it's to to watch for what his answers are because they may not be what you want <laughs> all right and you might learn more from the answers that aren't what you want than the ones that are perfect perfect on both on both ends um, looking for the opportunities and then looking for how God is for how God is moving and acting based on what we have, what we have lifted up uh, before him. Um, spot on on both ends of that. Um, I want to take us back in time to, uh, to consider uh, consideration of this, particularly on the front end, as, as what David just articulated. Uh, keep your finger in Colossians, and let's go back to uh, Matthew chapter 26. What verse? Uh, I'll tell you as soon as I find it. <laughs> okay. All right, we're actually going to look to add a few verses, but we're going to start with just verse 34. 
Um, leading up to Matthew chapter 26, um, right before verse 34, um, Jesus has predicted Peter's denial. Um, Peter replies in verse 33, even if all fall on account of you, I will never fall away. Truly, I tell you, Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Now, uh, now hold on to that and look down in verse 38, where Jesus says to his uh, disciples, Peter and uh, James and John, actually, uh, Jesus says, and my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Um, verse 39, he goes a little further. Uh, the Lord prays the prayer that we're familiar with that he prays in the garden. Now look in verse 40. He returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Jesus says, couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Uh, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Verse 33, when he came back, he found them sleeping. Now, skip ahead to verses 69 through 75. Peter's sitting out in the courtyard, and a servant girl comes up and says, you were also with Jesus of Galilee. He denies it before them. I don't know who you're talking about. He went to the gateway, saw a servant girl, saw him, and said to the people, this fellow was, within, was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, surely you're one of them. Your accent gives it away. He began to call down curses. He swore and said, I don't know the man. Immediately, a rooster road. Here's my question, and uh, you probably know where I'm going. Could Peter have potentially faced a different outcome if he had watched and prayed, as Jesus had been ask, uh, begging him to do earlier? The disciples think it's just another night. Jesus has gone somewhere to pray. Jesus has gone to the Mount of Olives to pray. Well, he always goes to the Mount of Olives to pray. Disciples think it's just another night. Jesus says, watch. Jesus says, pray. Um, they're having a hard time keeping their eyes open. Um, the, the battle between the kingdom of light and the kingdom of darkness is going on right in front of them, and, and they're half asleep. Um, so there's also an element of alertness to be looking for opportunities to pray, also being watchful for an enemy. So we were looking not only for God's activity, but also looking for what is Satan up to um, as well. Um, so there's, there's a lot to be in watchful uh, for sure um, on a lot of levels there. So he tells us to devote. He says to be watchful, and then he says to be thankful. So um, obviously you know what it means to be thankful in prayer. Um, tell me, how can we be thankful in prayer? Tom, Tom McDyde, go ahead. Uh begin with being grateful for the opportunity to pray through Jesus Christ to God and, you know, thankful that he came as a man and gave us the example and the opportunity, you know, to be our go-between and to, and to pray to God through him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, aligning us with, with gratitude right from the very beginning. Uh, we have this opportunity. This is who we're with. This is who he is. This is what he has done. Um, absolutely. Uh, Paul, uh, in this, in Colossians, has included gratitude in every chapter, while he's in prison, by the way. Every chapter, grateful for salvation in chapter one, grateful for the maturing Christians in chapter two, grateful for fellowship with Christ, grateful to serve in chapter three, 
grateful for how God is answering prayer here in chapter four. Uh, David. Yeah, so look at his example, right? So he's in prison. He's still grateful. He's still in total relationship with God, right? And what happens? He still has opportunities. God gives him opportunities to convert people, to spread the word. Um, you know, uh, the more we're thankful and the more we're in tune with God, the more we get the opportunity to do his work for him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to come back to that in just a minute, David. Uh, Tom, Sorry. go ahead. I'm glad, I'm grateful that I don't have to make an appointment that he's always listening and he's always there. <laughs> Me too, my brother. Um, I can imagine that um, setting up appointments over the last two months has not been the easiest thing. Uh, but um, yeah, no, no appointment required uh, to be in the throne room of, of the king of the universe um, is a, a tremendous, tremendous blessing that... Um, Hopefully, we're always we're always grateful for whenever it presents itself or whenever we, we take advantage of it. Um, yeah, go ahead, Mary, and then I'm going to go to Richard. Mary. Uh, you know, when you know, were talking and made me think about that song, Trust and Obey. If we, you know, we, we can show our gratitude by, by trusting God and doing what he says and obeying his word no matter what. I think you're right, Mary. That is a very important way we show our gratitude by, by putting our faith and our trust in him and doing what he tells us to do, for sure. Uh, Richard. I was just going to say that thankful that he wants to hear our burdens, wants mm. to share our sorrows and problems. You know, as people, a lot of times we ask people how they're doing, but we don't really want to hear <laughs> all the, you know, the stuff that may come out. But in this case, it's totally different. He is there for us, and he is, you know, he's our father, and uh, it's just thankful to have that. Absolutely. Uh, a father who wants, who wants to hear his children's heartbeat is, is huge. I appreciate you bringing that to the table, uh, Richard. Um, so devote yourselves to prayer. Be watchful. Be thankful. Then he says... Um, he takes us to some intentionality, and this is going to kind of bring us full circle to something David mentioned ago. Uh, pray for us, too, that God may open a door for our message so that we can proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. Um, there's an element of not only being thankful in prayer, not only being watchful in prayer, not only being devoted to prayer, but here in verse three, we've got an element of being very intentional and purposeful uh, in prayer, specifically in this case, uh, praying that doors of opportunity for the advancement of the gospel will be opened up. Um, in a very real sense, Paul is saying here, I believe God will open up a door when you pray for me. Uh, people will be saved when you pray uh, for me. And I think there's great significance in that. There's also great significance in what Paul doesn't pray for here. I don't know about you, but if I were in prison, whether justly or unjustly, I would be praying, get me out of here. Somehow, some way, get me out of here. And think about this. In Peter's case, Peter in Acts chapter 12, he's in prison. The, the church is praying for him to get out. He gets out. He goes to the church, and the church doesn't believe that God, the church at first doesn't believe it's Peter. So they have a hard time believing that God, God would answer the prayer, even though they prayed it. But nevertheless, Peter prays to get out of jail, or the people pray for Peter to get out of jail. He gets out of jail. Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas are in jail, singing hymns of praise to God. Earthquake happens. Paul and Silas, um, uh, the chains are released, but, but they stay because it's an opportunity to proclaim the message. Paul didn't even pray to be released here. 
Um, praise for a lot of things, but not that. Why? Yeah, Dave. Uh, first, it's, it's self-centric, but but more importantly, God has him there for a reason. He's not going to go against God's you know rationale. If, if God wants me here, I'm here. Yep. And, and while he's there, we get um, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. And tonight, almost 2,000 years later, we're having a Bible study about the things he wrote while he was in chains. Um Meanwhile, ima imagine, the, imagine the contrast. If you're a guard, you're thinking, I have a prisoner here. He is under my watch. He's under my control. He is my captive. I can pretty much do whatever I want. I've got him right where I want him. Meanwhile, Paul's thinking, I'm chained to, a, to this guy. He can't go anywhere. I get to sing. I get to pray. I get to talk about Jesus, and he can't do a thing in the world about it except sit here and listen. He's my captive audience. I've got him right where I want him. And when you read some of the closing credits in a lot of these prison epistles, you find people that have made their way pretty high up in government office that Paul has been able to influence because of being chained to these prison guards. So it's amazing in a lot of ways that uh, Paul is praying in this, in this moment that he's chained. He's already seen God, the, the kingdom is spreading. So he prays and he asks the people to pray that, doors of opportunity uh, would be open. A um, little different than what might be our first thought, but uh, the, the way Paul's always thinking. Yeah, David, go ahead. Also, if you think about it, most people, guilty or innocent, are very vengeful, if you will, against the people who are imprisoning them, okay? You see none of that from Paul, zero, nada, not a bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a radically different mindset, for sure. All right. Um, we're going to make a little bit of a transition here from prayer life with, with us and God to more of, of action and speech uh, that can be world-changing in a lot of ways. When uh, Paul says, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders, make the most of our every opportunity. And then he talks about conversation, being always full of grace and seasoned with salt. Um, so let's start here. What does it mean when Paul says to be wise in the way that we deal with outsiders? Obviously with outsiders, we're talking about those who, who are not Jesus followers, David. Yeah, for example, no Bible thumping, right? There's always a good approach and there's always a bad approach, right? right. Um, so be wise. Do, do God's will. Don't do what makes you feel good. Okay. Um, thinking about kingdom first. Uh, I like the way you said that on the end. Uh, more about that than what necessarily might make you feel good. Because what might make you feel good is an opportunity to go off on somebody. Uh, for one reason on a, or another and cause a lot more harm. Uh, than good. Um, can you think of some? Can you think of some examples that would make it difficult to share the gospel? Some exa some examples of actions that would make it difficult to share the gospel. Uh, David's already articulated one: just banging somebody on the head. Uh, uh, go ahead, Jeannie. I think it's very important. Go ahead. Being hypocritical. Hypocritical activity, saying one thing and doing another. Yeah, I, I've seen, uh, you know, uh, bumper stickers on cars that, that indicate they are Christians and they don't drive like Christians. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Be, care be careful what you put on the back bumper. <laughs> <laughs> Mike? Yeah, Mary, go ahead. 
Uh, you know, I, I don't know why this word just popped into my mind because this when I was growing up, we had our preacher used to say all the time about walking circumspectly in the world. Oh, and right. um, when I was working, of course, I worked in a in a large area. Um, you know, I worked at NATO at the time; it was Naval Air Depot. And um, being a Christian, around all over about 3,000, about 3,000 or so people, it was like being in a fishbowl. So, mm. um, I, you know, not only to talk about this passage, but I live it. And I can say that not being, not being hypocritical, but let people see how my life play out, you know, when I'm not around, you know, around other Christians. Absolutely, Mary. I, I appreciate you saying that. Very well said. Uh, proclaim the gospel, and if necessary, use words. Um, David. Uh, yeah, um, and for example, you can be insulting or condescending, you know, uh, even if you know you're right, it doesn't help you make the argument just because of that, okay? Yeah. Yep. Good point. Good point. Um, there's a, a professor at Harding, uh, Dr. Fortner. Um, I was at a, at a conference where he was, um, it was actually on the Harding campus, and um, he brought up um, epistemological humility. And he, he, used the, he used the big $50 word by design uh, to make the point, be humble how you know stuff. <laughs> uh, because you can come across in a very arrogant way if you're not careful. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very good point, David. Um, so, so not with arrogance, not with hypocrisy, uh, with humility, uh, yet, yet conviction. Uh, Paul is not saying by any stretch of the imagination to water anything down mm -hmm. uh, by, by any stretch of the imagination, but we don't have to be offensive um, as, as we share. Tom, what, uh, McTighe, what were you gonna say, brother? Uh, just say we need to add, you know, patience to our approach and with our study and also, you know, long suffering. You know, we have to understand that, you know, everybody reacts different and everybody is different when we approach them, regardless, you know, what their background is. We need to be patient. We need to continue with the truth, but we need to be long suffering in their questions and their attitude and the things that they've always done, that comes up a lot when you're in a Bible study. Well, I've always worshiped this way. I've always prayed this way. I've always had a priest to talk to. I've always had somebody telling me the Bible. We need to give them time to understand and have, you know, the gospel get into their heart and into their mind. Tom, that is such an excellent point. I appreciate so much you, you bringing that um, I often call that playing the long game, um, especially in an instant culture where we we want us we want to see the results by yesterday to to have God to have Godlike patience and and to let a seed take root and to be patient. I think is so so important. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Austin, go ahead. I think there are situations that uh, kind of uh, will will dictate the prayer situation between you you and someone else in different situations require different approaches i don't think you want to kind of like i guess it was uh, david that said don't come or somebody said don't be condescending i know that um occasionally i've gone to hospitals to visit people and i'm not I have no idea what their religious affiliation is, or whether they even know Christ for that matter. And I would like to pray for them. I will always ask, you know, be polite about it. Don't just jump in and say, well, I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. They may not really want to hear that. So I typically <laughs> will ask them, you know, uh, would you mind if I offered a prayer up for you? Nine times out of 10, they're going to be happy for that. You know, but there are those individuals that are going to, they're going to take that as an offensive move. And I just think we have to be careful how we go about praying uh, for other people. I, I know I've had some difficulty at times when we go out to eat with other couples that are not 
religiously inclined. Um, you know, I like to say a prayer at mealtime. And that's, that's a touchy situation, you know. Uh, you're in a restaurant and you want to, Marina and I always say a prayer. We don't, Jewish friends, mostly. Yeah, we've got some <laughs> Jewish friends, you know. And it's been difficult for me to figure out how to approach that you know, be able to satisfy our needs, they uh, obviously don't always have that same need. So, I mean, that's just the kind of thing you have to deal with. I know all of you have probably had that situation happen from time to time. So. Sure, sure. Um, a level of, level of respect is, is a big, yes. big deal. Yes, exactly. Uh, let's go Tom Green and then David. My mom always had two words when you're meeting with non-believers, and that's to be gracious and courteous. Amen. And uh, I've always, Amen. I've always remembered that. Yes. And, and I, I think, I think that's a, a perfectly in line with um, Paul saying, uh, "Let that conversation be full of grace." Yes. Uh, to, to add, to have that, to cut other slack to, to always be gracious in how we deal with others. Um, big, big deal. Uh, David. Okay, and this is to the type A personalities, okay? Um, remember that our job is to plant the seed. We don't make them be into Christians. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So true. So, so true. Um, it's interesting that he, that he um, here in verse six, we've also got seasoned with salt. Um, you have probably um, tasted something bland, added a little bit of salt and seasoned it, and it was wonderful. Mm -hmm. You might have also, at some point in your life, although you might not want to confess it on, on this group, you might, have, you might have had a French fry or two in your life, and they might have been salted to the point where the, where it was all salt and little French fry. Um, <laughs> it's interesting in this uh, passage when he says seasoned with salt, he didn't say drenched with salt. Um, so there there's just enough flavor to make something palatable. So it's not dripping, it's not overdone, it's not fake. But, but something uh, seasoned to the taste to make it appetizing. Um, so full of grace and seasoned uh, with salt. Um, and I, I think that helps us understand contextually what he means at the end of verse six when he says, so that you may know how to answer everyone. That he's not really talking here, uh, not necessarily that you have the correct answer for every single situation that might arise, but you know in what spirit to respond to uh, folks in, in varying situations. Uh, because how we respond is, can, can um, either enhance or totally ruin um, the opportunity that, that God puts in front of us. What else do you see in verses uh, two and six, two through six that get your attention? David, go ahead, brother. Uh, I think it's a bookend thing, right? So you've got the prayer, which gets you in the right mindset and gets you essentially in the groove with God. And then there's the uh, that last part of verse 6 there, uh, about uh, knowing how to respond, right? So if you're in, in tune with God, you're going to do a much better job of, of reading the situation, even if that's not your skill set. Absolutely. Absolutely. And trusting God to give that to you as you seek after him. For sure. Okay, everybody. I've enjoyed very much being with you tonight. Uh, we will uh, look through uh, some, some names next week. Some of them easy to pronounce and some of them not. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, these uh, varying folks have a little bit to teach us. I think will uh, will be a blessing. Um, if you do read ahead, it's only 10 verses uh, or 11 verses. If you do read ahead, uh, look for yourself, all right? See if you see yourself in anybody that's um, written about uh, in these last few verses. 
And I will talk about that and talk about some other things next week. Thank All you. Right. Let's, um, Good night. Let's uh, finish in prayer. And uh, Richard Dusty, would you lead us, please, sir? Mike? Yeah, Jeannie, go ahead. I do have a quick question. Um, is Dick Hopton in a rehab facility or at home or? Um, Gail, correct me if I'm behind the times. I believe efforts are being made to get him into short-term rehab. Is that correct, Gail? Correct. And they're trying to see if they can get him into Taylor. Okay. So is he in the hospital still until that happens? Yes. Uh, Baptist South, correct? Baptist South, right. Uh -huh. By the way, for those of you who don't know the inside of this game, often the hospital people are kind of biding their time to get the right bed at the right rehab facility as opposed to the next available. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Seen, seen that a good mm -hmm. bit. Thank you, David. Yeah. All right, Richard, whenever you're ready, brother. Let's pray together. Father, we're just so thankful for, again, this time together. We're thankful for your, for your word and the way it instructs us. We pray, Father, that as we are out and about every day, that uh, we represent you in the way that you would most see fit, that, uh, that our words are seasoned with salt, and that uh, we look at people, especially those who don't know you, as, a, as an opportunity to help them find salvation in such a way that uh, they will be drawn to, to you and to your word. Father, we thank you for each and every um, person who's part of this class tonight, for the time that they've taken, for the input that they've made, for the comments that are shared, because we, that's how we all learn from each other. And it's just so special and uh, such a blessing to be part of the family at Mandarin. <laughs> Father, it's a busy time of year. My prayer would be that everyone just step back and and just smell the uh, the fresh air, not be so wound up with everything that's taken place. Pray, Father, that you will keep uh, everyone as safe and sound as possible, and especially hold up all of those who are in need of your prayer tonight, either as part of our body or those of extended family and friends. Father, we're just so thankful for your son, and we pray this prayer in his name. Amen. 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 Hey, thank, thank you, Mike. You, everybody. Well done. Thank you very much. Good job. Good night, Good night everyone. <laughs> Take care. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Did you try to press one out and let me go all the way through with it? or?